This is it, the grand finale of our 2017 Monster Energy Supercross preview here with Racer X, Jason Wygant, Steve Mathis, Jason Thomas, David Pingree will check in from out in Southern California. This is titled, Too Many Riders, Not Enough Good Rides, and it has been the theme throughout the off season, and the off season is now just about done, and indeed, some riders are going to be left without rides. So I was waiting for some sort of 11th hour Cinderella story, a pumpkin to turn into a carriage. Nope, they're still pumpkins, not KTMs, but just something you cannot transport yourself in. A couple of riders are out. Dean Wilson, not sure. Malcolm Stewart, not sure. James Stewart, not sure. And barely sneaking in. A lot of rumors that the RCH team might not return. It has. Justin Bogle and Brock Tickle just finally announced, and Justin Brayton has caught on with the uh, Smart Top Moto Concepts team, which is a big step up for them. So let's forget the individual riders and let's talk about the situation. There are not enough sponsors and teams to go around. We need more sponsors. Camel Supercross, remember that? Coors Light, outside money. Coors Extra Gold, mm -hmm. those are the days. Come back. 15, Dino, Blue, come back. Oh, if that's not for Tim Ferry, let's be honest. It's for Timmy. <laughs> okay, yeah. And Team Suzuki, now gone. The ashes yeah. of Team Suzuki were Yoshimura Suzuki, that team is gone. So we've lost some rides, we've lost some sponsors. It's tough though. Yeah. It's a real tough time. Like I have a hard time, JT, thinking about like Stu. Like, Stu's not gonna be on the line. Mookie's gonna be there as a privateer, but how's he gonna do? What kind of equipment he's gonna have? We don't know. Stu though, like- Stu's he, done. That's a big name. Stu's done. Stu's done. Stu Stu's has done. ridden his last professional race. It's over. It's over, that, Stu is that, done. That, that, that. Do you not have any hope? Is there no hope? It's been a good run, Stu. This would have been eight years ago. It's been a, we had that, a good that, run. That's a hot take. That what is a bold, that is a hot take. There was a time when anything was stewable. It's now only retirement is stewable. Stu is done. Stu is a dad. Congratulations, James, on having your first child. But he's done. I don't want to live in a world where Stu doesn't race supercars. I don't want to live in that world. Unfortunately, that might be reality, but I still believe anything is stewable. I cannot believe that James Stewart would end it, not with a bang, but with a whimper. And that might be the, is this the way it ends? Really not a storybook ending there, but I want to go even larger. If what? Stu had a ride, if he had an offer, he probably would be out there. There aren't rides. What's up with this? No, I, I figured it out. I, I know why there are no rides. I, I have a, I have a blame chart, okay. a blame uh, pie yeah, chart sure on why there are no rides. Very scientific and accurate. It, no rides in, in the 450 class right now, folks. Uh, the 250 class is the number one reason to blame. Marty Davalos, Zach Osborne, Alex Martin. You guys, get up, get out. Get up to the 450 class. When you're up there, the elite talents will get rides. Uh, that's, that's the number one thing. not to be true. Malcolm Stewart won the title okay. and it didn't work. I don't want to hear it. Number two, nets. We have no nets in Supercross. We need nets in Supercross to protect the big berms. Bring back the berms, put the nets there. We'll have more rides. Canada. You can always blame Canada. Yeah, well, I 100% agree. Uh, Tim Ferry is to blame in the sense that the really? series has been not attracting enough stars since Timmy left. Oh, yeah, the, blight, the bright lights, the bling absolutely. that Ferry brought. Uh, uh, Phil, that's Phil Nicoletti. He is to blame for the lack of rides. As a matter of fact, he left a ride in the 450 class to go to 250s. Yeah, it's Phil. Phil's fault. Phil he probably would agree with you on that. And finally, finally, there's not enough rides in the 450 Supercross class because there's too much money. At the top. At the top. Yes. Ryan Dungey, Kenny Roxon, Eli Tomac, you guys are phenomenal riders, amazing riders. The OEMs are paying you too much and therefore it's trickling. It's not trickling down to the other riders, a la Jake Weimer, Mookie Stewart, and these types of guys. I know that um, it's a free market and you're getting paid what everybody would give you, but I believe that's the reason why. Hold on. That would be that, that would be that would be a, a blame pie. I'm trying to shift the shift the money around, redistribute I, the wealth. I just I just feel like you know at the top end of the number of guys that can win are so small, so they get all the money, and therefore as you go down, it hurts the class. And Phil, and Phil, definitely Phil. Winners are always going to make the most money, as they should. That's just how this works. They just shouldn't make six hundred percent more than. You know, well, a Jake Weimer or a Mookie Stewart. That's no awesome. one has a you gun know. to nope, these absolutely OEMs not. heads to pay this. So. Nope. And Only four riders in Supercross and outdoors last year won races on 450s. Yeah. So if you want to have one of those four winners, and last year it was only Tomac, Anderson, Dungey, and Roxon, 
There's a very high premium when there's only four people that won races. Pay them a lot. That's what it comes down to. If you're one of the few guys that can win, and that's the problem. We don't have 12 guys that can win, so they're not spreading the money 12 ways. They're spreading it four ways, maybe five. That's the problem. With the parity we have, it is what it is. Then I would move on to my next thing, Phil. Okay, well, just Absolutely. put the blame there. Here's another problem right here. The RCA Suzuki team here is a <clears throat> semi from last year. Yeah. Gone. Gone. Yeah. Two big logos, two big paychecks gone from that team, and that's why Tickle and Bogle, they did eventually get rides. I'm sure it's not yeah. for the traditional amount of money they expect to make. So why aren't they attracting outside sponsors? That's kind of scary. Although, if you break it all down and the amount of riders that did end up having rides, we believe it's about 16, that is still one of the highest number of riders that had factory level support ever. So I think part of the problem actually isn't teams leaving or not enough spots. Riders aren't leaving. Riders are sticking around longer. Chad Reed's still here. A lot of guys are still here, still taking up good spots. And because of that, we're gonna get to the point where we need 25 good rides in the 450 class, which is untenable. It's not possible. Go back to 1988, how many good rides were there then? Seven? Uh, yeah, something like that. Right, so we have grown. But in the last few years, who's retired? We assume maybe Stu's out, uh, Andrew Short's out, Ryan Kevin Villapoto. Windham's out, Ryan Villapoto's out, Villapoto gone, Villapoto gone, Stu gone. We lost to Windham, and uh, I mean, that's about it. We lost four riders. We're moving up three or four riders from the 250s every year. We're just running out of space. That's as big a problem as any, I feel. The pie, it's a good size pie. So do we make 40 man main events? Two, no. two waves of 22? No, we just have one. to accept the fact that yeah. there are only going to be so many rides. And the best guys are going to get those rides. And there will be years when very, very capable guys don't have the best deal. That, I think that's just where this sport is going. But don't have the best deal and have no deal are two, two different things. Mookie has no deal. Won the 250 Supercross Championship. And I think, okay, put Mookie on factory Honda next alongside Sealy and Roxon. He's a top 10 guy all day long in Supercross. I really believe that. Yeah, I agree. And he has not a bad ride or a limited ride. He has no ride. Dean Wilson, coming off injury, hasn't had the greatest success, has no ride. That is wrong to me. We need to get these teams somehow at the bottom, uh, get them a little bit of salary, get these guys expenses paid, and get to the races. I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm just saying that once you've already got 16 spots filled, there just isn't a lot of exposure and hype around the 17th position on the grid, whoever that might be. Right. And that's the problem. There's not a lot of companies seeing the value of having the 17th guy. I uh, think the longevity is, just like we said, I think longevity is, is more to blame than anything. I think that should be the biggest blame of all the blame pie because we don't have guys retiring at 22 and right. 24. 25 was like, oh my gosh, you're so old in this sport, a la Jeff Stanton, a la any of the guys that, I mean, 25, 26, <laughs> you are old news, you're out of here. Yeah. That's not the case anymore. Chad Reed's 35. I know he's the outlier, but guys, Justin Brayton, these guys are racing early 30s. Andrew Short, every every uh, you know third guy is it seems like is 30 years old in the 450 class these days. All right, uh, let's let's see if Ping has any interpretation. Let's throw it to another guy who you know raced a lot of races in the support there class. There we go. Just somebody there else who go. really knows about life. You know, in the support class, in the stepping stone class. All right, uh, Ping, I'm going to ask you this. Uh, with guys like Tickle and Bogle, they are locked in now, Brayton also. But it was late, man. Probably had to be a little stressful. Is that gonna affect their racing at all? And also, what do you think just in general about the lack of rides to go around? Yeah, it's definitely been a rough go for these guys. You know, if you talk to uh, Tickle and Bogle, they'll both tell you they've been just going through the normal routine, training, testing, getting ready. But boy, you'd have to think they'd be uh, They've had to have thought about it. They've had to have heard the rumors. There's no way they avoided that, despite what they say. They know the team is struggling to find sponsors. They lost a couple big sponsors. It's going to weigh on you a little bit. For those guys, at least they've been able to continue to test and ride. They've had bikes. There's been a, uh, a mechanic for them and those kind of things. So I think for Tickle and Bogle, it probably doesn't affect them as much. Uh, there might have been a little bit of uncertainty in the back of their head, but they're still getting the job done week, week by week and day by day. For a guy like Wilson, it's a bummer because he doesn't really have, a, he's bumming bikes from different people. He's riding basically a stock machine. He's probably not even riding much Supercross because he doesn't have the suspension. He's just trying to stay on a bike and be riding and be out there a little bit so that in case something comes up, he can jump on it. So for a guy like him, it is a bummer. And uh, it's a shame that, that we're just at that, at that point, you know, and 
It's been like this for a long time. People will talk about how terrible this year is. Oh, everything's so bad this year. There's lots of years. It, it just kind of comes and goes with the economy. There's just more riders than there are jobs right now. And uh, unfortunately, those guys are feeling the effects of that. I hope they can all find a spot, um, wherever that may be. So we'll see what happens. Again, I think those guys are tickle and bogle. They're going to be OK. Uh, for Wilson, he's going to have to play catch up a little bit if he finds something. All right, thanks for the analysis there, Ping. Um, let's talk about these guys now that they are locked in. Maybe they're affected with the late signing, Tickle Bogle, Brayton, maybe not. Uh, where do you expect these guys to fit in? To me, out of the group, I said earlier, I think Mookie on a full factory deal is a top 10 dude. Out of a van with a production bike, eh, I'm not, I'm not feeling so strong. To me, out of this group, Justin Brayton, I think, will be the best. He'll be on, he has work suspension on a 17 Honda. He's under the Moto Concepts truck. He'll have a nice sort of steady program with factory suspension. He gets to ride the Honda track. I like Brayton to kind of outperform Bogle, Tickle, and Mookie out of that group, and, and, and I like where he's landed. I have to agree. I think Brayton's in a good place. <clears throat> he's on, been on consistent equipment. He's been in Australia. He's been in Europe. He's consistently winning races. We've seen a lot from him. I think he's got a great base and a lot of momentum on a consistent program that he's been on for the last couple of months. So I expect him to be a top five guy at the first few races at least. Uh, the rest of them, we just don't know. Uh, Bogle has been riding a Suzuki, we know that. Tickle as well, but they haven't been really locked into their programs. There's been so much uncertainty and that has to weigh on these guys a little bit. So I think Mookie is even gonna show up. We hope so. What kind of bike? We have no idea. So it's really hard to put Mookie anywhere towards the front when he, we don't even know what equipment he's on, what, how much preparation he's been doing. We don't have any idea what the program's gonna look like. So I think Brayton, just by having the most stable situation over the last 60 days, I think we have to put him at the front. Um, Dean Wilson will be on a Yamaha early rounds. We heard he's gonna ride outdoors with Cooper Webb alongside Cooper Webb for the factory But maybe team. some Supercross mixed in. And maybe some Supercross. Dean will be at the Supercrosses on a Yamaha. Okay. But with, yeah, but where he's pitting, who knows? Yeah. One thing I think for sure, first injury, First significant injury, Mookie gets the call, right? I think so. I, I mean, think he yeah. has to be at the top of that list. I mean, I agree, and then that makes this whole thing that much harder to predict. Or do you call Stu? Other Stu? The other wow. Stu. That would be that would be bold. No, I don't think they do. I think they call Mookie first. Okay. This is a strange situation. Stu's the world. Done. Stu is done. He's done. Uh. The Stu is cold right now. The Stu is cold. And it hasn't been missed. It has been stirred. It hasn't not been being stirred mixed up. and warmed up. Not for very a while. spicy. But you put that thing in the microwave. On a short notice, you crank it up high, and the stew is hot. The stew will be hot. I think the stew boils over. That's the problem. I, I haven't seen any video of him really preparing. I haven't seen any of the work necessary to compete at that level. That's the biggest problem. It, it's cold right now. It can be heated quickly. Ping. What do you think about James Stewart? Is this the end? Yeah, you know, we're talking about James Stewart. I, I think this needs to be the end. You know, the fact that he's unable to find a ride speaks volumes, and I think he should take that to heart. James has had an amazing career. He's one of the most prolific riders we've ever had in the sport. He's changed the way it's, it's ridden. Uh, but he's had a lot of crashes, a lot of hits to the head. He's been around a long time. There, there's nothing left for him to prove. You know, go out, enjoy your family. You've got a new son at home. I don't know what the, what the rush is to get him back on the track. Yes, the sport's better with him there, when he's healthy and competitive. And I think we haven't seen that in years. Uh, it's just been too many crashes, too long without him being there and be competitive. So I'd like to see him stay involved in the sport somehow in some other role. Uh, if that's something he's interested in doing, that would be amazing. But if not, he's got nothing left to prove. He could walk away right now and uh, he'll, he'll go down in the record books as one of the all-time greats. So for his own sake, I hope he stays home and just in, and starts uh, charting a new path down his next chapter and uh, stays healthy. All right, that's Ping's take on James Stewart. You guys are all wrong. Out of this entire group, Justin Bogle by far is gonna have the best results. He gets good starts. We haven't seen even near his potential. He's been hurt a lot. He's coming in this year healthy. I think you will be shocked at how well Justin Bogle does this year. Watch out, everybody. I think he has a chance to get himself into that group of other riders we've talked about on previous shows. Everyone in this sport is looking, we know, wins, potential for wins. They're looking for guys that can be hot, every once in a while, as opposed to consistent all the way throughout. I think Bogle has a few shiny moments throughout the year, and that's what's gonna generate the most buzz. So you think at the end of 2017, Bogle is ahead of Justin Brayton in the points? Eh, who cares about points? I'm telling him you said that. Who cares about points? That whole take you just gave, I'm, I'm telling Justin Brayton.
I hope, I hope you have to deal with that. Yeah. Bra Brayton's my guy. There's no doubt about it. But I'm, unlike the rest of you guys, I'm unbiased. Not like these guys that JT's getting his information yeah. from. I'm unbiased. Bogle. I'm on um, the Bogle train. Now, we've had five episodes. Yeah. Had a lot of big predictions. Yeah. We want to hand out Cole Sealy's uh, going to win multiple races. Uh, yep. Eli Tomac could potentially be on the uh, chopping block and maybe move on from Cowie on, yeah. to uh, take Ryan Dungey's place and Ryan Dungey retires. Big, big predictions on the show. I say Bogle's going to be the best of that group. Here it is. The Hot Take For Award. Me. Who had the hottest take? I did. Sealy winning multiple races. Yeah. No? James Stewart's done as a pro. Congratulations. Forget the waffling. He ain't done. JT with the boldest prediction of all. Just count double check. The stew can be warmed up. It can be warmed up quickly. Will we see either Stew Brother race in 2017? There's only one way to find out. You have to watch the races. They'll, of course, be live on the Fox family of broadcast networks. Good job by uh, Monster Energy Supercross for signing the deal. Go to supercrosslive.com for all the information. Racing season is right around the corner. Ron Lachine for the Hall of Fame. Hashtag Dogger for Hall. This is what I'm talking about. Free Dogger, dogger for Hall. Free Dogger. Yeah, you just like dogs. Dogs for the Hall. <laughs> Get Dogger in the Hall of Fame, everybody. Steve That's, Lampson. Get yeah. Lammy in. That's it for our show. Thanks to David Pingree for uh, ha handling the analysis out there and the drawings in Southern California. We'll see everybody in Anaheim.